पेज नंबर एटी फाइव लेसन नंबर सेवन ग्लिम्सिस ऑफ इंडिया इट हैज थ्री पार्ट्स पार्ट वन अ बेकर फ्रॉम गोवा द स्टोरी इज बाय लूसियो रॉड्रिगेज पार्ट टू कुर्ग बाय लोकेश एब्रॉल पार्ट थ्री टी फ्रॉम असाम बाय अरूप कुमार दत्ता बिफोर यू रीड एक्टिविटी डिस्कस इन क्लास नंबर वन वॉट इमेज ऑफ पीपल एंड ऑफ प्लेसेज कम टू योर माइंड वेन यू थिंक ऑफ आवर कंट्री नंबर टू वॉट पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया हैव यू लिव इन और विजिटेड कैन यू नेम सम पॉपुलर टूरिस्ट डेस्टिनेशन नंबर थ्री यू मे नो that apart from the british the dutch and the french the portuguese have also played a part in the history of our country can you say which parts of india show french and portuguese influences number 4 can you say which parts of india grow number 1 tea and number 2 coffee now the first part the lesson a baker from goa This is a pen portrait of a traditional Goan village baker who still has an important place in his society. Our elders are often heard reminiscing nostalgically about those good old Portuguese days, the Portuguese and their famous loaves of bread. Those eaters of loaves might have vanished, but the makers are still there. We still have amongst us the mixers, the molders, and those who bake the loaves those age old time tested furnaces still exist the fire in the furnaces has not yet been extinguished page number 86 the thud and jingle of the traditional baker's bamboo heralding his arrival in the morning can still be heard in some places maybe the father is not alive but the son still carries on the family profession these bakers are even today known as peder in goa during our childhood in goa the baker used to be our friend companion and guide he used to come at least twice a day once when he set out in the morning on his selling round and then again when he returned after emptying his huge basket The jingling thud of his bamboo woke us up from sleep and we ran to meet and greet him. Why was it so? Was it for the love of the loaf? Not at all. The loaves were bought by some paskin or bastin, the maid servant of the house. What we longed for were those bread bangles which we chose carefully. Sometimes it was sweet bread of special make. The baker made his musical entry on the scene with the jang jang sound of his specially made bamboo staff. One hand supported the basket on his head and the other banged the bamboo on the ground. He would greet the lady of the house with good morning and then place his basket on the vertical bamboo. wickets would be pushed aside with a mild rebuke and the loaves would be delivered to the servant but we would not give up we would climb a bench or the parapet and peep into the basket somehow i can still recall the typical fragrance of those loaves loaves for the elders and the bangles for the children then we did not even care to brush our teeth or wash our mouths properly and why should we who would take the trouble of plucking the mango leaf for the toothbrush the tiger never brushed his teeth hot tea would wash and clean up everything so nicely after all oral comprehension check number 1 what are the elders in goa nostalgic about number 2 is bread making still popular in goa how do you know number 3 what is the baker called number 
When would the baker come every day? Why did the children run to meet him? Page number 87 Marriage gifts are meaningless without the sweet bread known as the ball. Just as a party or a feast loses its charm without bread. Not enough can be said to show how important a baker can be for a village. The lady of the house must prepare sandwiches on the occasion of her daughter's engagement. Cakes and bolinias are a must for Christmas as well as other festivals. Cakes and bolinias are a must for Christmas as well as other festivals. Thus, the presence of the baker's furnace in the village is absolutely essential. The baker or bread seller of those days had a peculiar dress known as the kabai. It was a single piece long frock reaching down to the knees. In our childhood we saw bakers wearing a shirt and trousers which were shorter than full length ones and longer than half pants. Even today anyone who wears a half pant which reaches just below the knees invites the comment that he is dressed like a padder. The baker usually collected his bills at the end of the month. Monthly accounts used to be recorded on some wall in pencil. Baking was indeed a profitable profession in the old days. The baker and his family never starved. He, his family and his servants always looked happy and prosperous. Their plump physique was an open testimony to this. Even today, any person with a jackfruit-like physical appearance is easily compared to a baker. Oral Comprehension Check Number 1. Match the following. What is a must? Number 1. As marriage gifts. Number 2. For a party or a feast. Number 3. For a daughter's engagement. Number 4. For Christmas. And the options are cakes and bolinias. Number 2. Sweet bread called ball. Number 3. Bread. Number 4. Sandwiches. Now the comprehension check number 2. What did the bakers wear? Number 1. In the Portuguese days. Number 2. When the author was young. Number 3. Who invites the comment? He is dressed like a pedder. And why? Number 4. Where were the monthly accounts of the baker recorded? Number 5. What does a jackfruit-like appearance mean? Page number 88. Thinking about the text. Number 1. Which of these statements are correct? Number 1. The pedder was an important person in the village in old times. Number 2. Paders still exist in Goan villages. Number 3. The paders went away with the Portuguese. Number 4. The paders continue to wear a single piece long frock. Number 5. Bread and cakes were an integral part of Goan life in the old days. Number 6. Traditional bread baking is still a very profitable business. Number 7. Paders and their families starve in the present times. Number 2. Is bread an important part of Goan life? How do you know this? Number 3. Take the right answer. What is the tone of the author when he says the following? Number 1. The thud and the jingle of the traditional baker's bamboo can still be heard in some places. Nostalgic, hopeful, or sad. Number two, maybe the father is not alive, but the son still carries on the family profession. Nostalgic, hopeful, or sad. Number three, I still recall the typical fragrance of those loaves. Nostalgic, hopeful, or naughty. Number four, the tiger never brushed his teeth. Hot tea could wash and clean up everything so nicely after all. Naughty, angry or funny. Number 5. Cakes and bolinias are a must for Christmas as well as other festivals. Sad, 
hopeful or matter of fact number 6 the baker and his family never starved they always looked happy and prosperous matter of fact hopeful or now about writing in this extract the author talks about traditional bread baking during his childhood days complete the following table with the help of the clues on the left then write a paragraph about the author's childhood days now the clues each clue has a blank space in front of them to write in it the author's childhood days the clues are the way bread was baked the way the peder sold bread what the peder wore when the peder was paid how the peder looked page number 89 part 2 number 1 compare the piece from the text on the left with the other piece on goan bakers on the right what makes the two texts so different are the facts the same do both writers give you a picture of the baker now the text on the left our elders are often heard reminiscing nostalgically about those good old portuguese days the portuguese and their famous loaves of bread those eaters of loaves might have vanished but the makers are still there we still have amongst us the mixers the molders and those who bake the loaves those age old time tested furnaces still exist the fire in the furnaces had not yet been extinguished the thud and the jingle of the traditional baker's bamboo heralding his arrival in the morning can still be heard in some places maybe the father is not alive but the son still carries on the family profession now the text on the right after goa's liberation people used to say nostalgically that the portuguese bread vanished with the peders but the peders have managed to survive because they have perfected the art of door to door delivery service the peders pick up the knowledge of bread making from traditions in the family the leavened oven baked bread is a gift of the portuguese to india this is adapted from nanda kumar kamats the unsung lives of goan peders number 2 now find a travel brochure about a place you have visited look at the description in the brochure then write your own account adding details from your own experience to give the reader a picture of the place rather than an impersonal factual description group discussion number 1 in groups collect information on how bakers bake bread and how the process has changed over time number 2 there are a number of craft based professions which are dying out pick one of the crafts as follows make a group presentation to the class about the skills required and the possible reasons for the decline of the craft can you think of ways to revive these crafts they are number 1 pottery number 2 batik work number 3 dhuri or rug weaving number 4 embroidery number 5 carpentry number 6 bamboo weaving number 7 making jute products and number 8 handloom glossary page 85 reminiscing nostalgically means thinking fondly of the past page number 86 heralding means announcing rebuke it is an expression of disapproval a scolding fragrance means scent page number 
plump physique plump physique means pleasantly fat body open testimony means public statement about a character or quality page number 90 now the second part of the chapter kurg kurg is coffee country famous for its rainforests and spices midway between mysore and the coastal town of mangalore sits a piece of heaven that must have drifted from the kingdom of god this land of rolling hills is inhabited by a proud race of martial men beautiful women and wild creatures kurg or kodagu the smallest district of karnataka is home to evergreen rainforests spices and coffee plantations evergreen rainforests cover 30% of this district during the monsoons it pours enough to keep many visitors away the season of joy commences from september and continues till march the weather is perfect with some showers thrown in for good measure the air breathes of invigorating coffee coffee estates and colonial bungalows stand tucked under tree canopies in prime corners the fiercely independent people of kurg are possibly of greek or arabic descent as one story goes a part of alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled here when return became impractical these people married amongst the locals and their culture is apparent in the martial traditions marriage and religious rites which are distinct from the hindu mainstream the theory of arab origin draws support from the long black coat with an embroidered waist belt worn by the kodavus known as krupia it resembles the kufia worn by the arabs and the kurds page number 91 kurgi homes have a tradition of hospitality and they are more than willing to recount numerous tales of valor related to their sons and fathers the kurg regiment is one of the most decorated in the indian army and the first chief of indian army general kariyappa was a kurgi even now kodavus are the only people in india permitted to carry firearms without license the river kaveri obtains its water from the hills and forests of kurg mahasir a large freshwater fish abound in these waters kingfishers dive for their catch while squirrels and langurs drop partially eaten fruit for the mischief of enjoying the splash and the ripple effect of the clear water elephants enjoy being bathed and scrubbed in the river by their mahouts the most laid back individuals become converts to the life of high energy adventure with river rafting canoeing rappelling rock climbing and mountain biking page number 92 numerous walking trails in this region are a favorite with trekkers birds bees and butterflies are there to give you company macaques malabar squirrels langurs and slender loris keep a watchful eye from the tree canopy I do however prefer to step aside for wild elephants. The climb to the Brahmagiri hills brings you into a panoramic view of the entire misty landscape of Kurg. A walk across the rope bridge leads to the 64 acre island Nisargadhama. Running into Buddhist monks from India's largest Tibetan settlement at nearby Bailakuppe is a bonus. The monks in red ochre and yellow robes are amongst the many surprises that wait to be discovered by visitors searching for the heart and soul of India right here in Kurg fact file how to reach Madikeri the district headquarters 
is the only gateway to Kurg. The misty hills, lush forests, and coffee plantations will cast a spell on you. Find a resort, coffee estate, or stay in a home for a truly Kurgi experience. By air, the nearest airports are Mangalore, 135 kilometers, and Bangalore, 260 kilometers. There are flights to Mangalore from Mumbai and to Bangalore from Ahmedabad, Chennai, Delhi, Goa, Hyderabad, Kochi, Kolkata, Mumbai and Pune. By rail, the nearest railheads are at Mysore, Mangalore and Hassan. By road, there are two routes to Kurg from Bangalore. Both are almost the same distance, around 250 or 260 kilometers. The route via Mysore is the most frequented one. The other route is via Neelamangal, Kunigal or Chandrayanapatna. Thinking about the text. Number 1. Where is Kurg? Number 2. What is the story about the Kodavu people's descent? Number 3. What are some of the things you now know about? Number 1. The people of Kurg. Number 2. The main crop of Kurg. Number 3. the sports it offers to tourists page number 93 number 4 the animals you are likely to see in kurg number 5 its distance from bangalore and how to get there number 4 here are six sentences with some words in italics find phrases from the text that have the same meaning look in the paragraphs indicated number 1 during monsoons it rains so heavily that tourists do not visit kurg words in italics are that tourists do not visit number 2 some people say that alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled there the words in italics are some people say Number 3 The Kurg people are always ready to tell stories of their sons and fathers valor This is from para 4 of this story And the words in italics are are always ready to tell stories Number 4 Even people who normally lead an easy and slow life get smitten by the high energy adventure sports of kurg this is from para 6 of the story and the words in italics are even people who normally lead an easy and slow life number 5 the theory of the arab origin is supported by the long coat with embroidered waist belt they wear this is from para 3 the words in italics are is supported by number 4 macaques malabar squirrels observe you carefully from the tree canopy this is from the para 7 of the story and the words in italics are observe you carefully thinking about language collocations certain words go together Such word friends are called collocations. The collocation of a word is the company it keeps. For example, look at the paired sentences and phrases given hereafter. Which is a common collocation and which one is odd? Strike out the odd sentence or phrase. A. Point 1. How old are you? Point 2 How young are you B Point 1 A pleasant person Point 2 A pleasant pillow Now number 1 Here are some nouns from the text culture monks surprise experience weather tradition Work with a partner and discuss which of the nouns can collocate with which of the adjectives given hereafter The first one 
has been done for you unique terrible unforgettable serious ancient wide and sudden for example the first one is culture this can be matched with unique culture ancient culture likewise you have to answer for number 2 monks and there is a blank space for your answer number 3 surprise blank space for your answer number 4 experience blank space for your answer number 5 weather blank space for your answer again and number 6 tradition with blank space for your answer page number 94 2 complete the following phrases from the text for each phrase can you find at least one other word that would fit into the blank number 1 tales of blank number 2 coastal blank number 3 a piece of blank number 4 evergreen blank number 5 blank plantations number 6 blank bridge number 7 wild blank you may add your own examples to this list the third part of the chapter glimpses of india third t from assam pranjal a youngster from assam is rajveer's classmate at school in delhi pranjal's father is the manager of a tea garden in upper assam and pranjal has invited rajveer to visit his home during the summer vacation chai garam garam chai avender called out in a high pitched voice he came up to their window and asked chai saab give us two cups pranjal said they sipped the steaming hot liquid almost everyone in their compartment was drinking tea too do you know that over 80 crore cups of tea are drunk every day throughout the world rajvi said view exclaimed pranjal tea really is very popular the train pulled out of the station pranjal buried his nose in his detective book again Rajvi too was an ardent fan of detective stories but at the moment he was keener on looking at the beautiful scenery it was green green everywhere rajvi had never seen so much greenery before then the soft green paddy fields gave way to tea bushes it was a magnificent view against the backdrop of densely wooded hills a sea of tea bushes stretched as far as the eye could see dwarfing the tiny tea plants were tall sturdy shade trees and amidst the orderly rows of bushes busily moved doll like figures page number 95 in the distance was an ugly building with smoke billowing out of tall chimneys hey a tea garden rajveer cried excitedly pranjal who had been born and brought up on a plantation didn't share rajveer's excitement oh this is tea country now he said assam has the largest concentration of plantations in the world you will see enough gardens to last you a lifetime i have been reading as much as i could about tea rajveer said no one really knows who discovered tea but there are many legends what legends a oh, well there is the one about the chinese emperor who always boiled water before drinking it one day a few leaves of the twigs burning under the pot fell into the water giving it a delicious flavor it is said there were tea leaves and uh, tell me another a uh, tell me another scoffed pranjal we have an indian legend too bodhi dharma an ancient buddhist ascetic cut off his eyelids because he felt sleepy during meditations 
ten tea plants grew out of the eyelids. The leaves of these plants, when put in hot water and drunk, banished sleep. Tea was first drunk in China, Rajveer added, as far back as 2700 BC. In fact, words such as tea, chai and chini are from Chinese. Tea came to Europe only in the 16th century and was drunk more as medicine than as beverage. The train clattered into Mariani Junction. The boys collected their luggage and pushed their way to the crowded platform. Pranjal's parents were waiting for them. Soon they were driving towards Dekiabadi, the tea garden managed by Pranjal's father. An hour later, the car veered sharply off the main road. They crossed a cattle bridge and entered Dekiabadi tea estate. On both sides of the gravel road were acre upon acre of tea bushes, all neatly pruned to the same height. Groups of tea pluckers with bamboo baskets on their backs, wearing plastic aprons, were plucking the newly sprouted leaves. Page 96 Pranjal's father slowed down to allow a tractor pulling a trailer load of tea leaves to pass. This is the second flush of sprouting period, isn't it, Mr. Barua? Rajveer asked. It lasts from May to July and yields the best tea. You seem to have done your homework before coming, Pranjal's father said in surprise. Yes, Mr. Barua, Rajveer admitted, but I hope to learn much more while I am here. Thinking about language Part 1 Number 1. Look at these words. Upkeep, downpour, undergo, drop out, walk in. They are built up from a verb, keep, pour, go, drop and walk. And an adverb or a particle, up, down, under, out and in. Use these words appropriately in the sentences Given hereafter, you may consult a dictionary. Number 1. A heavy blank has been forecast due to low pressure in the Bay of Bengal. Number 2. Rakesh will blank major surgery tomorrow morning. Number 3. My brother is responsible for the blank of our family property. Number 4. The blank rate of this accountancy course is very high. Number 5. She went to the enterprise company to attend a blank interview. Number 2. Now fill in the blanks in the sentences given as under by combining the verb given in brackets with one of the words from the box as appropriate. Over, by, through, out, up, down. Number 1. The army attempted unsuccessfully to blank space the government. Now the word to be used is throw. Number two. Scientists are on the brink of a major blank space in cancer research. Break. Number three. The state government plans to build a blank space for Bhuvaneshwar to speed up traffic on the main highway. The word to be used is pass. Number four. Gautama's blank space on life changed when he realized that the world is full of sorrow. The space should be filled in with the use of look. Number five. Rakesh seemed unusually blank space after the game. The word to be used, cast. Page 97. Part 2. Notice how these ing and ed adjectives are used. A. Chess is an interesting game. B. Going trekking in the Himalayas 
This summer is an exciting idea. C. Are all your school books this boring? Now these adjectives are to be used as given here. I am very interested in chess. We are very excited about the trek. He was bored as he had no friends there. The ing adjectives show the qualities that chess, trekking or these books have. They cause interest, excitement or boredom in you. The ed and en adjectives show your mental state or your physical state. How you feel in response to ideas, events or things. Number one. Think of suitable ing or ed adjectives to answer the following questions. You may also use words from those given earlier. How would you describe? Number one, a good detective serial on television. There is a space for your answer. Number two, a debate on your favorite topic. Homework should be banned. There is a space for your answer. Number three. How you feel when you stay indoors due to incessant rain? Blank space for your answer. Number four. How you feel when you open a present? Blank space for your answer. Number five. How you feel when you watch your favorite program on television? Blank space for your answer. Number six, the look on your mother's face as you waited in a queue. Your answer to be incorporated in the blank space. Number seven, how you feel when tracking a tiger in a tiger reserve forest. There's a blank space for your answer. Number eight, the story you have recently read or a film you have seen. Blank space for your answer. Number two. Now you use the adjectives in the exercise which was given earlier as appropriate to write a paragraph about Kurg. Speaking and writing. Number one. Read the following passage about tea. India and tea are so intertwined together that life without the brew is unimaginable. Tea entered our life only in the mid-19th century when the British started plantations in Assam and Darjeeling. In the beginning, though, Indians shunned the drink as they thought it was a poison that led to umpteen diseases. Ironically, tea colonized Britain where it became a part of their social diary and also led to the establishment of numerous tea houses. Page 98 Today, scientific research across the world has attempted to establish the beneficial qualities of tea, a fact that Japanese and the Chinese knew anyway, from ancient times attributing to it numerous medicinal properties. Source History Tea Anytime by Ranjit Biswas from Literary Review The Hindu of the 1st October 2006. Collect information about tea, for example, its evolution as a drink, its beneficial qualities. You can consult an encyclopedia or visit internet websites and play the following roles. Imagine a meeting of a tea planter, a sales agent, a tea lover or consumer, a physician, and a tea shop owner. Each person in the group has to put forward his or her views about tea. You may use the following words and phrases. Point 1. I feel. Point 2. I disagree with you. Point 3. I would like you to know. Point 4. It is my feeling. Point 5. May I know why you Point six, it is important to know. Point seven, I think that tea. 
Point eight, I agree with. Point nine, I suggest. Point ten, I'm afraid. Number two, you are the sales executive of a famous tea company, and you have been asked to draft an advertisement for the product. Draft the advertisement using the information you collected for the role play. You can draw pictures or add photographs, and make your advertisement colorful. In this lesson, what we have done: given a picture of three different regions of India, giving an idea of how varied and charming and beautiful our country is. What you can do. get your students to arrange an exhibition of photographs of different places in india good sources are travel articles in sunday newspapers or in travel magazines or in brochures available at travel agents ask students to bring in two or three pictures each accompanied by a short neatly handwritten write up on the place shown in the pictures arrange them on your classroom walls let the students study them they can then discuss and later vote on the place they would most like to see page number 99 the trees can there be a forest without trees where are the trees in this poem and where do they go now the poem the trees inside are moving out into the forest the forest that was empty all these days where no bird could sit no insect hide no sun bury its feet in shadow the forest that was empty all these nights will be full of trees by morning all night the roots work to disengage themselves from the cracks in the veranda floor the leaves strain toward the glass small twigs stiff with exertion long crammed boughs shuffling under the roof like newly discharged patients half dazed moving to the clinic doors i sit inside doors open to the veranda writing long letters in which i scarcely mention the departure of the forest from the house the night is fresh the whole moon shines in a sky still open the smell of leaves and lichen still reaches like a voice into the rooms page number 100 my head is full of whispers which tomorrow will be silent listen the glass is breaking the trees are stumbling forward into the night the trees are stumbling forward into the night winds rush to meet them the moon is broken like a mirror its pieces flash now in the crown of the tallest oak this poem is by adrian rich Adrian Rich was born in Baltimore, Maryland, USA in 1929. She is the author of nearly 20 volumes of poetry and has been called a feminist and a radical poet. Now the glossary. To disengage themselves means to separate themselves. Strain means make efforts to move. Bow means branch shuffling moving repeatedly from one position to another like in crusty patches or bushy growth on tree trunks bare ground formed by association of fungus and alga thinking about the poem number 1 part 1 find in the first stanza three things that cannot happen in a treeless forest part 2 what picture do these words create in your mind sun bury its feet in shadow what could the poet mean by the sun's feet 
Number two, part one. Where are the trees in the poem? What do their roots, their leaves, and their twigs do? Part two. What does the poet compare their branches to? Number three, part one. How does the poet describe the moon? A. At the beginning of the third stanza, and B. At its end. What causes this change? Part two. What happens to the house when the trees move out of it? Part three. Why do you think the poet does not mention the departure of the forest from the house in her letters? Could it be that we are often silent about important happenings that are so unexpected that they embrace us? Think about this again. When you answer the next set of questions, page number one hundred and one. Number four. Now that you have read the poem in detail, we can begin to ask what the poem might mean. Here are two suggestions. Can you think of others? Part one. Does the poem present a conflict between man and nature? Compare it with the tiger in the zoo. Is the poet suggesting that plants and trees used for interior decoration in cities while forests are cut down are imprisoned and need to break out? Part 2 On the other hand Adrian Rich has been known to use trees as a metaphor for human beings This is a recurrent image in her poetry What new meanings emerge from the poem if you take its trees to be symbolic of this particular meaning? Number five, you may read the poem on killing a tree by Jeev Patel, Beehive textbook in English for class ninth N C E R T. Compare and contrast it with the poem you have just read. Now the homophones. Can you find the words below that are spelled similarly and sometimes even pronounced similarly, but have very different meanings? Check their pronunciation and meaning in a dictionary. Point number one. The dump was so full that it had to refuse more refuse. Point number two. When shot at. The dove dove into the bushes. Point number three: the insurance was invalid for the invalid.